Okay, let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. We're gonna look at some uh, broad market charts. We'll take a look at gold and we'll go ahead and wrap up. So as I get into it, guys, if you're finding some value in the content, if you find you know the analysis is accurate or whether you find the trade ideas interesting, just leave me a thumbs up. Let me know how I'm doing. L leave a comment below. I do appreciate the engagement. It does help the channel. So thank you for that. All right. So we'll start off with triple Q's on the tech sector. So a couple things uh, in the private member group uh, on Friday, I believe I let everyone know that I was going short again, uh, just starting to build a starting short position. So here's what I've got. I mean, obviously bigger picture, the upward trend line is broken. This is your upward trend here. And we were right uh, in a rising trend uh, since, uh, you know, pretty much all year of 2023, that trend was clearly broken and taken out right there. Boom, sell signal. So you got the sell signal, you gap down, hits the first level of support, which was this reaction low. And then we had a bounce. We bounced into the gap. You can see here on this gap um, that, it, that we entered the gap intraday, but they can't seem to get a close uh, in the gap uh, you know, and, and that's basically it. If you get a close within the gap, you're probably gonna fill that gap. The gap fills about 364.40 on the triple Qs. But again, we're not able to, we keep getting rejected at the gap entry. It enters the gap intraday and then sells off. The sellers are stepping in. So I see that as kind of bearish, the fact that we enter the gap and it just sells off and there seems to be sellers right here. So to me, that looks like an objective area to start to build a short position. On the upside, yes, we could fill the gap. That's completely possible. I don't know if it's gonna do that or not. The charts tell me that it's not as of right now with the price action I've seen over the last few days, but obviously it could. And then there is always the potential. There is this downtrend line here on the daily chart. You can see resistance, 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 and there is the potential to maybe rally up to that downtrend line. That'd be likely the max bounce. That would be that downtrend line. Um, I don't see that right now. So as of right now, I'm just gonna go against this resistance right here and looking for uh, us to start to head lower. We take out these lows right here. Um, the lows that I have are really about 354-ish. Probably just move this down since we had a couple closes right there. 354-ish, you take that out and you're likely gonna usher in that next wave lower. Remember the trend line, the upward trend line has been broken. And we are, if you really look objectively, we are trending lower. You've got lower highs and you've got, you know, you've got kind of lower lows and this is even a lower low right there. So we are in a downtrend. And again, I'm treating the charts in the market as such. We are that we're gonna continue that downtrend until proven otherwise. And looking at the interest rates, again, this is something I think everyone should be focused on. You really should be looking at this on a daily basis because it's very important. This is your 10, 10 year treasury yields. So basically the interest that's paid on the 10 year uh, bonds, uh, tre treasury bonds. And um, you can see, you know, really since the COVID lows, this is your daily chart. Uh, we are continuing to be in an uptrend. As I zoom up, you can see, New high today, new closing high as well. So interest rates continue to march higher and this is very likely going to continue to put pressure on stocks, especially the really just interest rate sensitive things. Um, tech stocks are typically interest rate sensitive um, and gold obviously is kind of a, you know, it, you know gold is, is very interest rate sensitive. So as I flip over to gold, here's gold futures. Uh, I, I can't make a solid, I mean, as far as I can tell, we just broke support um, and heading down to the next level of support. Gold futures, I've got about 1808 as your next level of support. Uh, and I don't see any support. You know, I, I just don't see any support until we get down there. So more to go on the downside. And then if I look at the, the miners, this is GDX. I've been kind of toying with the trend line. I can kind of make a trend line here. I, I don't know if it's valid though, because I've got a support, support, and then we just hit it. This hasn't been verified though. If we just keep going lower, we're not gonna have a reaction here. And I need at least three reactions to validate a trend line. One, 
two, and I just don't have the third. So not anything I want to trade off of right now. I just don't see enough in the gold charts to tell me that this is going to hold. And, and if anything, if I look at the previous support, you can see we also had some support right here, which was about 2663, and we just took it out today. So to me, that looks like a break of support. I don't see divergence. Uh, it just looks like it's heading lower. And then when I go to Newmont, this was a potential trade idea. Looked good. It looked relatively good, but the problem that I always had with this one was that this was the only chart that of a lot of the miners that look this way and a lot of the other miners didn't. This is your largest miner, but you have a bullish falling wedge. Lots of reactions to ver verify that wedge. Um, and you also had bullish divergence here on the PPO and you had it on the RSI, but you can see today, boom, took that out. So that's bearish. And then you also, you broke down to the downside of the wedge and took out the divergence. So, yeah. Not great. It's not a. I'm not in this position, um, but I started to nibble on it here or yesterday or the day before. I exited it on Friday and I just kind of went flat. Today I didn't take any position on this one. So again, it's not my favorite because the the rest of the miners just didn't really have the same look. It was really just this chart. And these things typically trade all together. You can see here, here's the, all the miners I have. They're all down today. It's just a technical thing happening. It's not any one individual miner weakness. It's just weakness across the whole sector. And it's primarily due to those interest rates rising. And the dollar, of course, if you look at the dollar, the dollar just spiked up today, up 75, you know, three tenths of a, or, you know, um, three quarters of a percent. Pretty good move in the dollar and a breakout, you know. Um, looks, yeah, I mean, again, here's your uptrend line I've got, support, 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 and yeah, on Friday, we hit that support line here, held it, bouncing again, so no break of support, I don't see any real divergences, it just looks like the dollar is moving up, so this should continue to put pressure on stocks as well. And that's why, again, I'm starting to build short positions because I think we're gonna likely start to roll over in the market again. Let's look at wheat, commodities. This one, um, you know, it, it we hit support on Friday, big sell down on Friday. But again, nothing's technically changed. You have this big bearish rising wedge or bearish bullish falling wedge. Breakout, back test, breakout, back test. There's your back test. Back tested again on Friday, bouncing off that support and rallying. No technical change though. This is an inside day, which means that pretty much today's price action, the, the high and the low, traded within the price, you know, within the former day's price action. So it's an inside day. So these don't mean anything. It's a continuation day. It, it's, you know, we're in a downtrend. We're back testing support, but there's no technical change here. So we could continue to back test. I don't see anything today telling me any different. For me, I think you know, we need to really break the $6 range on wheat in order to confirm, you know, the kind of that upward momentum. Okay, trade ideas, individual trade ideas. GE, this one looks like a sell signal today. Um, on this one, again, if I roll out, you've got this upward trend line support all through here. And we broke, we had a sell signal, but it just kind of levitated, floated up here. Um, support, you know, support was really about right in here. Uh, and then resistance overhead. And today you can see we hit support here, bounced, and today we have a breakdown. That's a break of support with a daily close below support. So to me, that signals that this is likely going to continue lower. Um, and I don't see much of the way of support on this until you know this 200 day moving average right down here. So that would be the next profit target from where we're at right now. That would be a move of about, 10 and a half percent or so, 10% down to that next level of support. And the key thing about this one, why I would assume it's going lower, look at the negative divergence. It's been building pretty much, it's been building for a while, since January of 2023, this divergence has been building. So that tells me that this is very likely going to hit the 200 and probably a lot lower. There's good solid support right here. Look at that supports. It's former resistance kind of reactions right through there. So I'd say the 200, you probably flag out and then ultimately drop down to about this $90 range 
for um, for the profit target. Likely going to get a decent bounce at that level. PHM, this is your home builders. Again, resistance right now, which was former support. It's right here. I got it kind of circled. It's about 74.88 today. Rallied up into that resistance. They sold it down. It's been kind of knocking on that resistance from below. But again, I'm looking at lower prices. Uh, next level of support. And this is only okay support. I suspect we just go right through there and probably come down to this. 65.50, I think, is a good solid target. You got the 200 day, and you've also got several reactions through here. So that would be a better level of support, and that's where I anticipate this thing going. It's about a 10% drop. Again, negative divergences have been building for a, quite a while on that one as well. And I'm looking at my sectors right here, and you know, this over here on the right, I've got all these different sectors, and you can see they're pretty much all down. The only thing that was up today was tech, okay? And if you really narrow it down to which stocks in tech were up, we're talking about the, the Magnificent Seven. That You've got, you know, roughly seven stocks. Seven stocks, have, uh, you know, were catching a bid, and the rest of the market was pretty much getting smoked uh, down quite a bit, so. Quite a big divergence there. Um, interest rate sensitive things such as the the uh, utilities just down four and a half percent roughly. That's a huge move. Um, yeah, there's there, there's definitely issues going on, and just to see tech rally, it can be deceiving because the waiting, but it is showing that there is quite a bit of selling going on. Mastercard and Visa again. Mastercard just coming off this recent uh, bearish rising wedge right here with negative divergence, sell signal and kind of flagging out and you know, still holding that flag. But again, this to me looks like it's, it's bearish action. So I think you flag out and then continue lower down to the 200 day moving average. That would be the next level of uh, okay support. That's about, you know, four and a half, five percent before you hit that. There should be a probably a, a bounce there, a minor, you know, minor bounce of anything. Uh, still looks bearish though. Okay, that's really all I see. I mean, there's obviously other things I could point out, but besides that, there's not too much change. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up, guys. If you're interested in checking out my technical analysis course, link in the description below. Private member group, link in the description below. Again, I'm just kind of throwing out additional trade ideas to that group or anything interesting I see throughout the day. So join up if interested, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.